The story that you have, like, it's traumatizing, it's disgusting, it's horrific. He was making me feel like I was insane. It was a nightmare. It was six years of my life that was so painful and horrible. That's an actual monster. Like, that's disturbing. If that doesn't say you're fucking guilty, I don't know what the fuck does. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Let's Get Into It podcast, hosted by me, Sloan, where we discuss the dark side of the entertainment industry and confront controversy. Today, we are joined by Alexa Nicholas. She's a mother, an activist, an actress. How are you doing, Alexa? I've, do, I've, I've been better. You've been better. I feel like I've been better. So you guys may recognize Alexa from the hit show from Nickelodeon, Zoe 101. She was Nicole Bristow, which was Jamie Lynn's best friend in the show. And that's like, I guess, like one of the most popular projects you've worked on. But you've, Yes, but you've I would worked, say, yeah. Definitely. You've been in Hollywood for some time, though. Long, like, oh, 27 oh, years. A really long time. A long time. Like, too long. A little, maybe too long. That's why I, like, backed out of it, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> like, a little, a little too long. But and yeah. I'm glad. And honestly, before we get into, like, your career and your life and just, like, everything people want to know, you know, Dan Schneider, Jamie Lynn, uh, oh, Mike, God. I have to ask you about... Amber Heard, because I've gotten so many emails. So have I. Of people I've saying, tons of that. <laughs> they're like, you need to expose Alexa. She's acting disgusting on Instagram right now. <laughs> why Sorry, the what? fuck is she support? No, people are really want me to expose you. So why the fuck do you support Amber Heard? Um, why do I support Amber Heard? Well, hey, pull that mic a little closer, girl. We want to okay. know. All right, all right. You guys sure you want to know? I feel like I'm gonna get more harassment. After <laughs> no, you this won't. Because <laughs> I've already received. I think so it's much important harassment. though. No, because I see your side. I think it's important. So that's why I kind of want to start there. Yeah. So I mean, with Amber Heard, I mean, she's already had enough evidence, um, in my opinion, that shows that she was abused by Johnny Depp. I don't feel. Like, there needs to be any more evidence, in mm -hmm. my personal opinion. I, I really don't. I think 14 exhibits of someone being hit is enough for me to go, yeah, there's... Yeah, like, um, where there's smoke, there's fire. There, yeah, happens. totally. And also, you know, him, like, there's, like, an audio message where she's saying that she broke up with him after he beat the shit out of her, and he doesn't say anything. He admits to that. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's enough for me to go, there was abuse there. Yeah. There was, she did suffer from abuse. I mean, that's just pretty clear to me personally. When they were, when the trial was happening, like yeah. a lot of people were watching, obviously. I watched too, you even watched it was too. very triggering. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing was really triggering because, you know, defamation suits usually happen um, by abusers. Mm -hmm. It's a typical tactic to further the abuse and also to silence uh, the victim. Most of the time, defamation cases end up settling yeah. So they get like a settlement and they're able to shut up the person and and, and move on. Um, this one seemed a little bit different because it seemed to me that he really did want to make um, like a full display yeah. um, of what he wanted to continue to do to Amber Heard. And him filing in Virginia to me is just shady as fuck. Yeah. And that's it's so like, true. Why did you do it in Virginia? Oh, I know. Like the defamation <laughs> tactic is such a silencing thing because it you is. guys know I get tons of cease it and desist is. letters and like they're always trying to threaten me defamation yet they never actually sue me no and it's weird that it happened in like literally where i was born in fairfax virginia like that's, that's where, right i forgot that's yeah. where you're actually from but there's something you said about like i think that what really stuck with me speaking to you because like i've also been kind of jaded by this whole like situation everyone, like everyone else it's like trump again yeah it's just a trump <laughs> oh situation it's, it, it really is Girl, it, no. i mean it really is uh, it really is it's you, the same it's just division tactics and it gets everybody feeling like they're picking a side and hyped on something and yeah it's a power it, Everyone feels empowered by it in a weird way. So whatever their opinion is, they're feeling like, yeah. empowered. And it's such a, like, there is such a strong, like, feelings when it does come into it that you told me, you're like, in five years from now, like, people are going to be like, what did we do oh, to this woman? totally. Like, remember you Britney? Know? I mean, yeah. look at what happened to Britney. Everyone was calling her crazy, mentally yeah, ill. True. Her kids should be switched. taken away from her. Oh, oh yeah. Gosh, stop. And we thought, we thought we moved away from that. And actually, we're being faced with the fact that we haven't moved away from that. Yeah. We really haven't. Because if you look at how... You know, the trends with Amber Heard, you know, recounting her rape, her abuse 
turning into memes and TikTok videos. Yeah. I mean, you have to be a fucking soulless ass person to make fun of anyone talking about domestic violence or rape. I mean, to me, that's just despicable. It's like, even if you don't think she's telling the truth, let's say, I don't think you should be taking clips of that and making it a humorous like yeah. joke. That's just, where where is your heart? That's just, and it's so triggering for so many <clears throat> survivors that if a survivor is watching that and seeing how people are actually taking in someone's you know story mm -hmm. you know that's going to silence a lot of people that's yeah. going to have an impact on the movement we've just created in the last few years that has a huge impact and I'm already seeing it actually I get so many messages from girls who go I was going to come forward about my abuser and now after the Amber Heard Johnny Depp situation like, I don't feel comfortable yeah. and I get it I, I got off of Instagram I was like I yeah. am out of here I am <laughs> well I think that's why it's so important like here. some of you guys may like be super turned off by like Alexa sharing that but I think it's important to hear what she has to say because she offers a different perspective and experience because you were abused. And I was, yes. I want to talk a little bit about, um, do you feel like your situation with Mike? Mike is Alexa's ex-husband who was abusive towards her. Do you see some like resemblance in oh, the Johnny so Depp much. and Amber Heard? Yeah. Well, first of all, <clears throat> those text messages that Johnny Depp was sending around to people, mm -hmm. first of all, if that was, if he was talking about my daughter, I mean, imagine this is like your sister. I mean, I mm -hmm. hate to do that because that's such a lame thing to do. But it's I, like, yeah, but I get imagine it. if it's your sister. Imagine if it was your mom. And this individual is, ta and you're supposed to think that person's not abusing her? What are you talking about? Like, that person's just naturally abusive. And also, you put 10 quaaludes on top of 10 <sighs> MDMAs and you've oh, got a no. monster. Well, I guess that's what he calls himself. But, like, that's, I mean... In my personal opinion, when I saw his text messages, it reminded me a lot of what I have experienced in, in I don't want to say relationship because I hate to use that word with Michael. Because it was like an, a grooming, manipulative. Yes, it's a fraudulent relationship. Yeah. And I saw so many similarities after looking at Johnny Depp's text messages and just seeing how he's been playing like the whole thing. Like his demeanor and totally. stuff since then. He's laughing. In the ch if that was Amber Heard... You know, if I was Amber Heard. If she won and started acting like that, then oh, yeah, it totally. would have been. Oh, yeah. totally. I mean, it's just so strange to watch in there doodling and snickering. And even when he went up on the stand, it was like, dude, this is not an audition for a film. This is your, yeah. you know, like when you're abused, you you can't even control the way that you're presenting yourself. So when mm -hmm. I see somebody pr trying to present themselves a specific way, I start to see a red flag a little bit. Because you can't, when you're talking about abuse, <clears throat> It's triggering. Yeah. It's extremely triggering and your body starts acting in a certain way. And then you see that with Amber Heard and then people would actually take snippets of that and make fun of those things. And it's like, those are actual... Like visceral reactions totally. to... Totally. Like PTSD vibes. Oh, one hundred percent. And it's you know, and even to mock her about her appearance, et cetera. I mean, that's just pure misogyny. We've been dealing with that for yeah. God, the beginning of time. And you think that we've moved past it, but I, I really saw with the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial that unfortunately it's been an aesthetic. Um, this Me Too movement, not that much justice has really been served with it. Not systemically, that's mm -hmm. for sure. It's more of a Hollywood kind of flag card of just like, oh yeah, we're kind of taking this seriously. But then you see it and you see how people really respond to it if they're having to witness like a trial court situation yeah. and you're like this is not jerry springer guys it's a it's such a bad <laughs> example like it's a horrible it's example it's making me think about your relationship with mike like personally yes. i've learned a lot about just domestic violence from being friends with you and mm -hmm. listening to these things and like yeah um it's reshaping now how other people understand like how domestic violence works yeah, you don't even know what's happening when it's happening yeah. that's what's scary about it and also they have two sides to them mm -hmm. and you see the one side and you're horrified and scared. And then they flip to the other side where they're extremely loving and charming and, you know, all the things that you kind of want in a partner almost, mm -hmm. you know, and they just know how to turn that on. Yeah. And it's so manipulative and it messes with you. That's why also, you know, when I was watching that trial, it's like, you don't know what's actually happening to you when it's happening and you are actually loving that person. So you're trying to get them better. Yeah. You know, you're actually thinking that you're going to be the person that makes this person actually that be fixes them. Yeah. yeah. And then you end, end up getting, you know, really abused, messed up. Yeah. yeah you get up getting abused. So it's horrible. I definitely want to talk about your relationship with Mike. So his name's Mike Milos, right? His Am name I is, right? yeah, it's Mike, Mike, Mike Milos. Milos yeah. He's, 
the lead singer of a band called Rye. Correct. And I don't want to like jump into it too quickly. I kind of want to like back up a little bit and talk a little bit about like your acting career and then like let's Going lead up that? to it. Yeah, like let's kind of skip <clears throat> the Zoe 101 part and just okay. like so you started acting at how old? I was like three years old. And were you doing like commercials? Or? I was doing commercials, mm-hmm. yeah. Like commercials and um, like coupon ad uh, yeah. photos. Well, <laughs> yeah, so you're like, like for like chicken fingers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so you're like an infant in those moments. So you don't like remember them, but do you maybe remember just like seeing the commercial later on? And Totally. Kind of have that? Oh, okay. I mean, I remember... I remember mostly going to school and having to deal with a lot of bullying because kids would see me in these commercials. Uh-huh. And I feel, you know, in retrospect, we're getting jealous of yeah. that. Uh, and so I would go to school every day and I would just be picked on for whatever I said in the commercial. Um, they were like reenacted and kind of oh, make fun no. of me. It was it was horrible. That's why I ended up getting pulled out of school. And, yeah, I was going to say, if you, did you stay? So when did you get no. pulled out? Pulled Fourth out of grade. College? Okay, wow. So I, And I wasn't even in school that often because I was working consistently. Yeah. By the time I was 12 years old I did 75 commercials I think okay um, so I was working pretty much non-stop and then doing television as well um so yeah that's at fourth grade my mom was like <laughs> you know what it's probably smart since you're not even there that mm-hmm. often and then you're also getting bullied let's let's take you out of there <laughs> so obviously like a three-year-old isn't going to go and apply for an audition so whose no. choice was it was it your mother's choice to kind of get you into the industry or it, your- well apparently as the story goes mm-hmm. i was running around a restaurant pretending i was a waiter so i was always really into impersonating people um my mom said even when i was really young like all i wanted to do was pretend i was whatever adult was in the room yeah and so we were in a restaurant and i went up to some woman pretending to take her order Mm -hmm. and it happened to be an agent oh wow and so she went up to my mom and was like your daughter is adorable if you you know ever want to put her into acting or modeling um here's my card and it ends up being one of the bigger uh like commercial agents in chicago Mm mm-hmm and so my mom thought about it and she's like, well, you know, maybe I'll bring her to a few and see how she reacts to yeah. it. And she did. And I you loved, thrived. I thrived. <laughs> yeah, I apparently. I, like, I was like, when is my next audition? I loved it, which is still, you know, I would never do this to Nova, my, my daughter, yeah. even with my own personal experience, even though I know like that I was enjoying it. Yeah. yeah, I just wouldn't want to because a kid kind of thrives in a lot of places um, at a young age and you can't truly know if it's really what they want to be doing or mm-hmm. if they're taking the hype from the people around them you know it, it, it at a kid's age like you just don't know for certain and that would worry me a little bit but yeah. all I do know is that I don't have any memories of me not wanting to go to auditions or not wanting to go to set like I yeah. loved that that was and something I loved. Honestly, your mom seems super awesome. I've met her she mom. Is. So she kind. She's really great. I don't like know anything about your dad though. Like, is your dad in the picture? Was he a part no. of this at all? Like, like no. when you were three, were they together and he no. knew you were doing commercials? My, no, my dad left my mom when she was six months pregnant. Oh, okay. So yeah. So my mom was a single mom. Mm-hmm. And then he came back into the picture for I think a day. Uh oh when my I got a day. Yeah, Shut I'm, up. I'm not even Just kidding. One you. Day. I have one photo the tra- with him. Oh my god, stop. wait, have you like you still don't talk to him right I now? I talk to him now. You do now, but like your childhood was like he was absent. He was completely absent. Oh, that's so messed Apparently up. I was crying and my dad wanted me to cry it out or something and my mom didn't want to do that and he just walked out. Um and like they then, were arguing. Like did yes. they not get along very well? He was just not a he was a rugby player from New Zealand. Oh, so wow. and a very good one. And so he had, you know, a little bit of an ego. I'm sure he was a ladies man. Oh. And so he didn't really respect my mom. Um, and he even had a kid before me with another woman, and then he had three kids after me. So you so have siblings. I have siblings. Are those your only siblings? Those are my only. So I have a sister and three brothers. Do you know them? I know my sister. I don't really know my three brothers that well. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're – so my three brothers are in New Zealand, mm-hmm. and then my sister's in Canada. So they're like – so is Nicholas your born name, right? It's my mom's last name. Is so that your she current did not. last name still? It is. Or you cha- okay. Oh, I never changed. It's was... your mom's last name, so it's not Correct. your dad's or anything. No, okay. my mom was like, "Fuck that." I'm yeah, not like give he's you not taking like... ownership yeah, of her. Totally. Like, girl. What the hell? Like, no. So she gave uh, her last name. Yeah. So eventually, you do these commercials. Yes. You're working on these projects, and then, how old were you when you auditioned for Zoe 101? I was 12 years old. 12 years old. I was 12 years old. And that old. was probably your biggest like project yet. It 
what I, yeah totally I mean I was on an NBC I was a series regular on an NBC show called Hidden Hills but okay. it was an adult show wait I think I know that Hidden do Hills? you know yeah <laughs> you're like Hidden Hills I've heard that sounds yeah oh is it's it about actually... Hollywood too with these hills and no, stuff no like, no girl. no it's not it's about this small suburban area in California where um. it's just like white people mm. in a you know a, su- a suburb and you know kind of weird things start happening in the sense of they start having affairs it's kind of like a dark comedy TV show and I was the daughter in that oh, okay. so that was a, a show that went off but it wasn't anything that brought me personal attention because mm-hmm. the adults were the leads and I yeah. was just like the kid in the show you know what I mean okay so Zoe one was the first lead character yeah. where the attention was more on me and I wasn't just someone's daughter or something you know cool. and we'll be talking about Zoe one one later <laughs> on in this um, oh, no. in this episode but I I want to like kind of skip forward so you work on Zoe 101, and then, because I want to get to where you meet Mike. So, Zoe 101 ends. Yes. Um, or at least ends for you. <laughs> yes, it ends for me. And then, um, it definitely afterwards, ended for me. what's that, like, that that project you were on? Like, okay, so you were on a few other projects after Zoe 101. And I know there was one where you played, like, a pregnant Amish, like, 14. Like, what was that situation? Oh, like, God, yeah. Um, is that, like, right around when you first, like, interacted with Mike? Yeah. All right, so let's talk about that role, and then let's talk about the first interaction you had okay. with him. It was Children of the Corn remake. Uh. <laughs> so it was, like, Stephen King's Children of the Corn. Wait, so is it scary? Was it scary? Maybe? It was supposed to be, but it was definitely not scary. It was yeah. a horrible film. and ended up being on sci-fi. It was just, like, one of those, I don't know, like, B-movie one-offs, you <laughs> yeah. know? And I remember auditioning for it, and I, I think I auditioned for for someone else and then I got another role and it was for a 14 year old Amish pregnant girl and I was like okay Okay. you know you just kind of do what you got to do and your agents you know the industry is so fucked because even if you personally don't want to do something agents are you know any role's a role and it's yeah, exposure it's like you're not gonna get the next one if you're not gonna yeah. do this one and it's like oh you know what like though I would kind anymore. of thank you so much I was like I kind of would rather wait for a role that was I don't know not a 14 year old Amish pregnant girl but whatever yeah. uh, let's let's go for this I mean, at this point like so when let's you're like go. when you're 14 everything's been pretty like chill I mean besides like your dad and stuff oh, like, yes, yes. you've had a pretty good childhood you haven't been like abused or exploited I mean no. obviously the Jamie Lynn stuff we've got like some trauma when it comes to Zoe 101 which but, like, is why the Amber Heard thing actually was very uh re-trigger like triggering for yeah. me just because these people are full-on bullies like everyone's acting bully yeah. material and that's why i even had to get off of instagram for a while it was just it was triggering in that sense where it was kind of reminding me of zoe 101 yeah. a little bit where it's all of a sudden just attacks on my character and mm. picking at me, telling me my daughter's going to be stupid like me. Girl. You know, these things are, yeah. So anyways, we'll, we'll go back there. But it, it was triggering for me for in that way just yeah. because of Zoe 101. But before that, before the Children of the Core movie, I... I didn't really experience anything that like super bad. No, yeah. no, 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 not what ended up happening. And how was like working on that set? Was it a long time that you worked on the children? It was a few the- weeks. Okay. It was a few weeks. It was in Iowa. In, in the middle of nowhere. It was like just cornfields I mean, no, galore. We love our Midwestern. Of course. So. No, it was, it was it, but it was like, you know, you're just isolated in the hotel basically yeah. there the whole time. And so I would have rather gone out, but I was stuck in that hotel room and then going set, hotel room mm-hmm. set. Um, so you're playing a 14 year old, but yes. how old were you then? I was uh, 16 years old. 16. I just so, turned, yeah, 16. You were a fan of Rye's, right? I know. So he, Rye actually did not start until he met me. Rye was like inspired by me. Um, oh. He was his own like solo act called Milosh. Okay. And it was like electronic music, singer songwriter, but electronic. Oh my music. gosh, I was gonna ask you like, because just again, like heads up, because I feel like nobody knows who he is. So Mike Milosh <laughs> oh, no. was her her ex, and then also her abuser. But he was part of a band called Rye. But at one point, he had a Milosh like act where he was just playing like kind of electronic music. Yes. Because yes. nowadays Rye's a little bit more like R and B kind of, and like yeah. slow, like you know, they call it bedroom music or baby making music. Ew. It's, like, it's so gross. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I don't like to think about it like that, but he was his own solo act before. Did you and, find him on like struggling. MySpace or something? Like, where'd you find him? So I found him on MySpace. Oh, MySpace I, is no good. And MySpace <laughs> is horrible, and I wish I would have known that then. I, we I were just, all on it. We were all on it, and I just remember wanting to go see him play. 
because his music was great. Mm-hmm. And that's what I thought, it, I mean, as a 16 year old. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, wow, this music's amazing. I want to go see him play. And then I went to his MySpace page hoping to see like a tour lineup because MySpace used to do that. Yeah. And I didn't see any shows. So I just sent him a message saying, you know, hey, if you're ever in Los Angeles playing, let me know what venue I would like to get tickets to go. So were you like 16 at this point or was this before 16. like that? So this is right around that time where you right worked around. on that project. I and was everything. literally in the hotel room mm-hmm. in Iowa. And I sent it, and I remember getting a message like two minutes later. I want to like briefly. Really I want to switch gears and then come back to this. Yes, I please. just want you guys to know how disgusting and foul this man is because mm-hmm. I feel like I already have like a mentality of like who he is by this one story. I have to bring up right now. You probably already know which one it yes, is. Yes, it's There's, horrible. Okay, so when Alexis started like sharing what she went through with Mike, which we'll go through the whole history. Trust me, I'm gonna ahead of my. Okay, <laughs> but like oh, there's this one time where like someone told you that. Mike had a girlfriend, and correct me if I'm wrong, but he had a girlfriend, and I guess this girlfriend may have, like, cheated on him or something, and to kind of get back to her, he didn't, like, break up with her or, like, publicly shame her, but they, like, got intimate with each other, and when he went to go and, like, eat her out or some shit, he put, like, hot sauce or something on her vagina? Yes. What the fuck? Yeah, I know. That is so, like, that's something, like... it's really scary. That's an actual monster. Like, that's disturbing. I don't even know, like, could hot sauce in the vagina, like, I mean, the pH alone is, like, you guys are trying to keep your pH right. Like, have a hot sauce in there. You're trying to, like, make her infertile or some shit. It's horrible. It's disgusting. I had I just had to, like, get that out because, like, it makes me so mad. Yeah, that's, like, burning someone's flesh, basically. It's so disgusting. And the most very vulnerable, fragile area And didn't of he the brag body. about it, too? Yes, he bragged about it like, to many people. Oh, and actually, that's you. actually a pattern of his that I noticed um, while knowing him was that he would brag about his abuse. Yeah. He was somebody who collected. Also, I think he, you know, I felt he was a collector of sorts. Yeah, let's would, talk a little bit about yeah. that too before we get into because yeah. I didn't even really like account for I that. Got it my There's tool. like um <laughs> this guy's a f- like in my opinion a fucking creep because he has he's abused people but he also has recorded the abuse and then used it in his music. Yes. So I think I think they were Japanese, right? Is that They were Korean, Korean, I found Korean? out later, yeah. Okay. So He was wrong. He said they were Japanese girl, and they're Korean and it's like, wow, he you, can't even get it right. No, and horrible. So what's like the story you know about that? So basically he told me that he met these two Asian women um in Toronto and they were getting tipsy, I think at a bar that he okay. was at. And he got drunk with them. He told you this, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, he told me this. Why do you even tell someone that? Like, that's so unattractive. Like, yeah. Does he think you could be more attractive to them after that? Like, no. I think he actually got away. I think that... He, like, gets off on that I shit? I think because of misogyny. I mean, especially... We're thinking... Well, well, when was this? This was, you know, 2010, 2011, 2012. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Me Too movement didn't even happen yet. Misogyny was at an all-time high. I mean, early 2000s was just come everywhere i feel like ew, uh, <laughs> ew. i feel like guys were jizzing everywhere ew, and they did not everywhere. care they did not care at all and so and i grew up in that era ew, and there was no body positivity there yet so it's like not, not only all. are we like oh being nothing little, but we're like no you PC. can't be fat either or anything nothing. like no 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 you can't even be a human then <laughs> you had to be like a specific archetype of something for people to even know who the fuck you were so, so he meets these women at the bar they're yes. drinking and everything and, and he he, they don't speak on. any english he said oh, that really? was something that he made sure to note he was like they could barely speak any english it was like fragments like (laughs) i don't know yeah and so Uh. he then had this idea to bring them back to his condo in toronto Mm -hmm. and so he invites them back they say okay i guess so it goes like like, who who fucking knows like Like, lost in translation yeah he doesn't even fucking know so they and they're intoxicated so this is already not consensual yeah so they go back to his condo and he has this whole idea to make some drinks drink with them And to mic them up while he does sexual things to them, which is sexual assault. You say mic up, like, does that mean, like, setting a mic next to the bed or, like, literally putting a mic on them? I don't know how he did it for them specifically. Yeah. I'm thinking then he probably just set up his mic like this, close. Like, near the laptop or some shit? Totally. Ew. And recorded the whole thing. And then put it in a song on this uh, album called Meme. And this was before Memes. Oh. So, okay. which is weird, but you have to remember with Milos that I think He's is kind of, of interesting. Oh, yeah, right. So, but <laughs> no, actually, no. Because if you think about it, so his second album was called Meme, which is actually Mimi. And then his third album was I, I, I. 
So it's like typical narcissist shit. Like yeah. he's hiding the whole thing as a meme, but it, honestly, I just see me, me, and I see I, I, I. Oh, it's just about him. Totally. It's all him. It's, weird. All, him. it's so all him. So he records a snippet yes. of them, like, what was it? Like the snippet of just kind of like the moaning? Yeah, it, well, no, they're actually talking. And then when I put the snippet up on my Instagram, I got a message from a <clears throat> Korean fan who said they were Love able that. to translate Love what that. the girl was saying. I know, I, I couldn't believe it. And, sh and they said that she was saying something like, uh, I don't want it fast. Like, I don't want that fast. And was just like so scary uh, in retrospect to know that's what she, and to put that part of whatever they were doing in the song, you're it's like. It's weird because he's like inspired by that yes. shit. Oh, no, no, very much so. Ew. Very much so. And so, yeah. So that, I mean, he did often. Then even with You Make Me Feel, um, there was a girl that he was seeing at the time who I've heard, in, you know, controversial stories about that she was possibly a minor when they first met mm -hmm. she lived in holland he went there very similar pattern he seems to from what i've heard from other women that have encountered him that he likes to use women in the sense of he finds them to like pay their rent his rent or to even buy his underwear or yeah. whatever it is and so even with you make me feel he had recorded um mic situations as well. So this has been a pattern for him for a while. So that's why when I was hearing the music at 16, that's going into my mind as kind of like a, it's normalized. I wasn't, I didn't know the story behind it. I just thought that it was some kind of intimate exchange yeah. happening. Romantic. Romantic like, even. Yeah. yeah. Cause all like hidden behind this idea of art, you know, yeah. which artists can do fucked up shit just like anybody else. Yeah. And they can do shit. Manipulate sh those totally. things. Yeah. They're like, I'm an artist. And it's yeah. like, you're a sicko. Like, exactly. let's be real. <laughs> you're just, you're just pretending you're an artist at some point because I don't really personally feel that that's art. <laughs> like that's So let's go back to you're 16 years old. You message Mike because you don't see he has like any tour dates. And you're like, I would like to see this guy. Like, totally. He's got great music. Totally. And you get a response like quickly back. And like, what's his response? Two minutes. Like, friendly and everything? Ask and... for my phone number. Right like, away. Right away. And, and at this point, you're like 16. How old, Do you know how old he was like at this he point? He was 33. Oh my God! Giving He's Drake three Bell. years older than I am now. I'm still not even the age that he was then. Whenever, it, oh wow, that is so. And let me tell you, at think about. thirty right now, there is no way in fucking hell that I would ever talk to a sixteen year old unless yeah. it was ends up being my daughter's friend and they're yeah, over like, for a play. Yeah. And like there was no power, there was no education around power dynamics yet. Grooming, mm -hmm. I didn't even know what the fuck that was. Yeah, which is horrible that I grew up in an era where I didn't even know what grooming was. Um, so I didn't know. I just thought, oh, this is a guy. He makes music that I like. He's super friendly. And like super he's friendly. To meet up. Like, totally. Great. So I gave him my phone number. He called me like five minutes later. So how did the conversations go? Like, what'd you kind of talk about? Just like it's intro like an things. Hour just like of talking about life, him telling me about his music career, what he was wanting to do, that he was in Toronto at the time, or was he in Montreal? I can't remember which one, but he was in Canada. And I was telling him that I was filming Children of the Corn. He knew my age right away because I had to tell him who I was on set with, and that was a guardian. So when you're mm. on set under 18, you have to bring someone over the age of 18. And that wasn't your mom, no? And it wasn't my mom at that at, at that gig. Okay. You know, I, had a, I had my friend Sometimes Adam. it would be your mom, though, right? To okay. Most of the time. Okay. And for so, you know that specific time, I actually brought a friend of mine who was over 18 and so I told him that I was like oh I'm actually enjoying it this time because I don't have my mom here it yeah. kind of feels like a vacation kind of and so he knew and then he even told me on the phone that he was IMDBing me and back then IMDB had your age on it I don't know who ended up taking it out I don't know why yeah but then your age was on IMDB so I remember him looking and goes oh you're a child star you know, yeah. and then asking me, like, what's that like? And so the whole conversation was like an introduction of sorts, kind of sharing things about our life. And then at the end, he was like, I would really like to, you know, meet you and maybe outside of a show, like, let's go out to dinner or something. So at this point, when you're 16, like, obviously, like, some people have, like, relationships. Did you ever have, like, a boyfriend or anything before that? Like, a little, like... I did, yeah. Yeah, do you I remember him? Was it, like, whatever? Like I had boyfriends. I I dated a couple of guys. I was, like, very... Were they ever in I the industry? I thought I was going to save or? myself for marriage. So I started off as a Christian. Mm. Um, surprisingly, like, mm -hmm. very Christian. Okay. Um, and thought I was going to save myself for marriage. And then, unfortunately, I got, like, sexually assaulted when I was about... Just turned 15. 
And that um, wasn't by Mike, no? no? No. that was before you met Mike. That was before. Was and that I was one of your, drunk. like, boyfriends that you had? Yes. Okay, was he, like, a little it, older or something? He was, like, one year older than okay. me. And actually, I'm not going to say his name, but he he was somebody who recently got, like, arrested um, for doing something to an other famous actress oh as well, um, threatening to kill her, basically. Um, I think he's back in Texas now. But I was drunk oh, at a I'm party. Like yeah, they're yeah, gonna be they're, yeah I know. Blah, blah, blah. Everyone's no, be like, who is it? <laughs> oh, God. You'll probably find it fairly quickly. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about the relationship, like, kind of timeline-wise. So you start yes. talking when you're 16. Yeah. Um, when, like, I think you guys had, like, maybe a time where you were going to meet, but it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Was there? Okay, so what was that? So He were kept you, like, trying to meet up with me. In LA? He had a show, correct. Mm-hmm. He had a show, um, I think at the Silver Lake Lounge. Why didn't you go to his show? Because he wanted to go so bad. Okay, so at, we started having actual flirtatious conversations. So did that happen very quickly, though? Pretty like, quickly, yeah. Within the first within few days Within the of first talking. days, yeah. Okay. I sent him a photo of me as a pregnant Amish woman. And a girl, sorry, not woman. Yeah. And I was literally in a black cloak. It looked like Star Wars. It was like the most unattractive. I've seen that picture. Okay, you I'll have. have the editor put it up or something. Okay, yeah. Like, yeah. it's not attractive. It's like, <laughs> it, it's almost ridiculous. And so... So I sent it to him thinking it was funny um, Mm -hmm. and he ended up sending me back an email basically saying that he found me attractive as a pregnant girl. Yeah. And so that's when it really, you know, then that's when the flirtation. When you saw that, did you feel weird or did you kind of feel like, oh, did you kind of like that? Yeah, I was a little bit like, what? And then and then I got butter, you know, the butterfly feelings. And so it, it started to amp up after that. So then it was, you know, we started having Skype video and would you get like naked on skype and stuff like and this is before you ever met him right yeah so you're still a minor and is that before the opportunity of seeing him at the show the silver what were you gonna say yeah silver lake lounge i'm pretty positive he was doing a show there and he even wanted to crash at my mom's house and that's where i ended up not going because did your mom know you were talking no no so were you like because I tell my mom, like, everything. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how you are now, but back then, now I mean, when I we're do. teenagers, you know, we don't tell them anything. So, like, no, so you now, weren't telling her you were communicating with no. them. And nor was she, like, managing your phone not or anything, Not at right? all. My mom was not that. that type she of- didn't even know what technology was. So, like, she didn't even understand what was ca- what was possible on a laptop. Like, she didn't think predators were necessarily just, yeah. like, flocking on, you know. My mom thought I, most of the time I was just, like, aiming friends. Mm-hmm. And so she didn't think... I was getting in contact with people that she didn't already know, you know? So I didn't tell her. And once he wanted to stay at my mom's place, and that's he said, kind of ratchet. Mm, like, can't it, you, if he's going to have a show, then like <laughs> one, the show should give you housing. And if not, then correct. just pay for it yourself. Like it's I not a hundred dollars oh, for like a yeah. hotel room, but he's still trying to, but he somebody. wanted to, and he mm. also wanted to get with me at that time or sexually assault and me would, as a minor. Would you have been 16 still or 17? Do you think I was 16 at this okay, point? Okay, So it's still I like within so. the first year of you guys like yes, meeting and everything. Totally. And then he even said, which I got very nervous about was that he said moms love him, which I thought mm. was like, Huh, how many moms have you met? You know, that was yeah. kind of weird. And then he said that he's would be good at sneaking into the room while my mom was sleeping and that we could still do stuff. And I was like, with my, my have you met my mom? Like my mom will literally whip you out of the house. You know, if she if she my mom saw anything like that happening, my mom would freak out, you know? Yeah. So and at I this backed point, are you a virgin? Like, so the essay. I wasn't a virgin. So the at essay that point, took your virginity. It did. It did. Okay. So then, that's how I lost. But my then, virginity. were you like comfortable enough with sex that you could imagine, or did it make you nervous hearing those things from him? A mixture. Yeah. Okay. So you're kind of like wanted it, but at yes. the same time you're like, uh, like something uh, felt totally. like wrong about it. Yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. It was still like trauma response, and then also a mixture of having this bad memory of like how it got taken. Like, I mean, I hate that concept of taken, but like, yeah. you know, just the experience itself I hate that was concept ruined. Too. I know it's like because no the guy that like did that to me, like you. fucking like really lied to me like everything like i thought we both were losing at the same time but like he had like 10 barners before and i'm like and he was multiple years older than me and i was 15 mm. like it was so bad see everyone has i mean a lot everyone of people, has a lot, their, like, lot of people have this kind of experience especially the first time i yeah. feel like it's actually common for it to not go well yeah <laughs> for it to be not what you wanted it to be or not what you thought it was going to be you know so okay he does the show right you don't go. You don't see him during that I interaction. Don't. And then I message him. Was he mad at you that you didn't see each other during he that wasn't. time? No. So he was like, he was being kind about he it. He was. He was playing cool about uh, of it. Of course, I because think. he like wanted to get the main totally. prize. Say bye. Totally. Like, and he wanted to take photographs. It. Like all of this was deeply rooted in 
having sex with me, which is assaulting a minor. Mm -hmm. um, and then also he wanted to take nude photos of me. Yeah. So there was a combination. Um, and that was something that made me really nervous because I was already a known actress at that time. Mm. And this is the era of like Lindsay Lohan's and if you did something scandalous, you weren't seen seriously ever again. Like yeah. if a woman's nude, it's like, oh, she's damaged goods. Like, yeah. oh, we've already seen it, you know? And it's like, it's fine mm. if it's in a film and she's winning an Oscar for it, but if she's sending it to a boyfriend, all of a sudden she's, you know, dirty, you know? Yeah. And just almost like not professional just because she is a sexual person. So at that point, I was very nervous about doing nudes, mm -hmm. you know? But you are scared to say yeah, no. So <laughs> he did take nudes at one point, but before we right. get there, so yes. the show happens, you don't see each other, you're still talking. Is there another opportunity or Correct. like it's just you keep talking? There was another time. So then he tried to have me pay for his flight to come out to Los Angeles. For what? Just to see you? Just to see me. So not work or anything? It's not work. And at this point, are you still 16 or 17? Like, have you I'm been 17. Okay, so you've been talking for like almost a year mm -hmm. now? Like every day? Grooming. Every fucking day. Like and then very... he like... Sometimes there'd be, you know, maybe a couple yeah, like weeks a few in days, between. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, but, but it like, was pretty like pretty much it was a consistent. It was consistent. You never had like a falling out for a couple months or anything. No. So then, like, maybe a, a month here and there. Like I think after that show, there was a month where whenever I would get very nervous about something, I would pull back. Yeah. And then you know, but he would always be there totally. when you were ready to oh, engage totally. again and check in on me. You know that yeah. kind of thing. So, so then, how did the conversation of him coming about to visit you? Like, how did that happen? He brought it up, or so yeah, he wanted to photograph me again. He he really again? wanted again, like he like wanting to bring it up. Oh again. yeah, again okay, hasn't yeah. done it, but brought it up again, and it, it was all kind of around this Why whole do you want idea. To like he's a singer, like. Why is he trying to just take nude pictures of you? Because just to that, get to that point, I right? think it's a collector thing. Oh I mean, there's something weird about it. The more I've looked into it, it seems like he likes to collect what he's done. Oh, it's it's almost like serial killer vibes where they keep a little, like, you know, an yeah. item or something mm -hmm. from that person. Mm -hmm. So he wants you to... He sent nudes of a woman that he photographed, or a girl, to I don't know. You? To me. That would when make I'm me 17. feel so insecure. Like, I wouldn't feel good about that, right? Didn't mm -hmm. it make you, like... Oh, Ugh. yeah, I was like, oh, so you've been photographing a bunch yeah. of girls nude, you know? And so instead of so feeling like, hot. but instead of thinking, instead of thinking you're a predator, I was thinking, oh, this guy is like a player. You know, back then those things were intertwined. You weren't looking at a guy who is a douche as a predator. You were looking at him as just a douche and a player. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, oh, this guy gets a lot of women. You know, this is his thing. Like, he's a player. Yeah. So that made me that made me insecure, but Did that also make that nervous. trip not happen, kind of like so that trip didn't totally. happen, right? I was like, no way. Also, it's so weird to me that he like a thirty, so like maybe it was 33, 34 years now, thirty four, yeah. and he like wants you to pay for his shit to come there. It's so embarrassing. It's really. But sad. you don't. So if uh, let's <laughs> say you sad. were seventeen and you wanted to do that, did you have access to the money to where your mom would have noticed it? So I didn't have access to any of my money. Yeah. Um. Until I was eighteen. And, and did your was your mom like proper with like keeping it for you? Yeah. The only thing that ended up happening, which you will find out later, is like basically, since she was only getting I think fifteen percent of that as my manager, you're able to take a certain percentage out if someone's working for you. Which was really good because my mom yeah. was devoting so much time to me. Was that her full time job it at that was. point? It was. Yeah. It ended up because it ended up being full time. Yeah. And so, and she was a single mom, so she had no other spouse to take it on, mm -hmm. and so she devoted her, her life to that. Um, and so, I didn't really even have any money to pay for his flight. You know. Yeah. Um, and did you so, tell him that, or did you kind of avoid it? I did. I was like, I don't know if I have it. I don't yeah. know if I do. You know, I, I. It was more like up in the air. And then he sent me his passport information, and then he sent me those nudes in in October of that year and I was just it was fast it was really fast he wasn't somebody who was slow and it's cloud whoa it's actually pretty <laughs> it, this thing is so like nasty I'll tell you what is it elf bar do you want to try what it? is it is it tobacco let me try yours yeah it's like nicotine it's not weed oh um so <clears throat> you like so you don't meet him that time Strawberry kiwi. <laughs> Sorry, the, we're not having a serious conversation, but this, this is, is tobacco. This is so. Good. I haven't hit one of these in so long. Jewels are great. I, I'm not really a huge fan of like the the sugary tobacco. That's I like what it that straight. is. Yeah, but th this yeah. is kind of refreshing. Um, so where were we? This horrible story. So like, wait, that didn't happen. <sighs> And then, like, yes. so I don't want to, like, skip ahead to where you meet him, but, like, is there anything that happened, like, I guess, big before you actually met him? Like, anything else notable to, like, mention? So I sent him a, so I sent him a Were photo of Were you sending him news at this point? A, a, a thong kind of, like, photo of my Tips, butt. But, no, because okay. he, he was very much Oh, he's in into ass. You guys will see, too, like, he's obsessed with, like, the back door. Yes, and in a way that he will do 
anything for like, that. Oh my gosh. You know? And it's giving so, gay. Yeah, yeah. it is no, like, look, I can say that. It's giving gay. You can say <laughs> that. I was like, not me. <laughs> so he wanted to see your ass in the thong. He said he that did. stuff. And then he did. You and guys are so still I chatting. sent it and he sent me an email back like, um, that's so hot or something like that. Let's, we have to meet pronto. And I'm 16 or, or just turned 17 at that uh-huh. point. And he's like 34, 30, yeah, 34 years old. So how do you guys even go about like meeting? I turn 18. Mm-hmm. Now I turn 18 and Which get is my like trust so fund. disturbing to me because I like, not that I wish that he like, whatever as you might because obviously Thank i don't God wish any that of this didn't happen yeah. no but also at the same time like i think it would have proved a point like how cre- oh, cr- oh, i mean yeah, obviously yeah. this proves everything oh he would have done it oh he, he would have done it he had the opportunity he would have done it real quick yeah. but he got you when you're 18 mm-hmm. and i and he like- loves to use that he loves to use that as his defense uh, where it's like, like oh 18 but then he goes on to a dm that i saw to somebody where he's like the legal age of uh of having sex with a minor is 14 in europe it's like first of all any guy who's saying the legal age is Ew. a predator first of all Second of all, that just shows everything. Yeah. You know, like you're responding to people like that. And he goes, that's why people go to Amsterdam to smoke weed. You're like, so then is that why you were in Berlin? Like, what are you texting people in DM? So, like, what? Why was he in Berlin? Was he living there? He, oh, he was using another woman at the time. Oh, like he her was, place. Wait, wasn't she like kind of paying for like this? Everything apparently wow. too. Do you know who that woman was? Is she like, I eight? do. I'm not going to obviously yeah, yeah, disclose her, but like, yeah. So he, Is she also this was in his girlfriend industry, at the time. Know? No, 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 no just, just like, a total normal person. Yeah. Really kind, um, great person. And, Milos, he told me he moved to Berlin because it was cheap and he was doing the artist thing and it's where artists were moving and yada yada. But I found out that she was actually going there first because she got a scholarship or something. Oh. And then he tagged along that. Wow. And so when when I turned 18, he was in Berlin. She wasn't there at the time. And he was like, oh, this is the time that clip. Oh, I almost said the person's name. Um, <laughs> but this is the time that so and so is there and not there. And so you should come. And I felt like, okay, I'm 18, whatever that means, still a teenager, mm-hmm. which is So crazy. you're in LA living with your mom. I'm not living with my mom anymore. I have my own apartment. And when did you get your own apartment? Right when I turned 18. Okay, so you- so I got an apartment, Chase Knowles and Sherman Oaks. And were you um, working at this point? I was working a lot. So I was doing guest stars and then also I was testing non I was a I was a working What's testing. At. Testing means like when you're getting close to actually booking a TV show. Oh, okay. And so you sign the contract and everything, mm. and it's between you and another. Do you get person. paid a little bit for just testing? You don't. Or? No. Isn't that horrible? You don't oh, and so you, you do put all this, this work, work into and it. Then, like... Horrible. No, no, no. The, that's why I'm done with the auditioning aspect, because it's just you you put more money and more time into it than you actually get back most yeah. of the time. So I turned eighteen, had my own apartment had a dog, um, felt like okay yeah. to go and meet this person. Cause at first it was, I was meeting up with a total stranger that didn't know anybody that I knew and it was nerve wracking. Um, did now your mom I felt, know you were going to Berlin? Like, did you tell I your I did tell her. So now, yes, but I never told anybody really that we met when I was, or when I, we started yeah. talking when I was 16. So I was like, oh, I found this guy, a uh, musician, he's in Berlin, I'm gonna visit him there. And I was meeting my dad for the first time. At the same time. So in Berlin? When, no, in South oh, no. Africa. So oh. I made Berlin a stopover. Whoa. It was a ma- major horrible trip for me. Really? Um, the whole thing? Even well, the South just, Af- Africa? No, that was good. But it was it was massive. You know, like I'm going into... It's just a lot. Meeting someone who takes, you know, 15 years of my life to abuse. And then I'm meeting my dad for the first yeah. time. You know, and so looking back at it, it just feels like, whoa, I, I didn't even know what I was getting myself into in that trip. Yeah. And now I can Where'd see Where'd you go it. first? Your dad's first? So I went to my Berlin first. So Berlin that was first. a stopover. Shoot. So I went to Berlin and it was, you know, how bad, were you obviously. There for? I was there for like eight days. And then how was like your first like meeting with him? Like, was it, did Very it feel, weird. but also did it like, I'm not trying to like negate how bad it was, but mm-hmm. like, did it also feel like romantic and nice and like totally. kind of like felt like full circle, like oh, I'm totally. finally with this guy and everything. Totally. And and what was weird about though was I remember on the bus from the airport to the place, he was just staring at me. Oh, because he picked you up at the airport. Yes, just and, staring at you and like, just looking staring. At you, like, like and a it was prize. totally. Oh, but it was more like. Gosh. But but if I at the moment it was like he was in love with me. You know when someone's like love at first sight vibes. That was what he was giving off. Did you like that or did you feel uncomfortable? Both. Like yeah. it was like oh you know it, like, this hopefully is I look good after getting off of the plane. Yeah. You know when someone's staring at you and you're feeling insecure. Yeah, also I mean, you're at the 18 same years time. old. Totally. Like, and he's like 35 now at yeah. this point. And so I just remember him looking at me and not saying a word like yeah. it was like a long stare for a long time and then we finally got there 
Um, Did you guys like do it the first night? He, yeah, he. But you guys got drunk, didn't you? We drank, and he unfortunately. Well, I got my period when I was in the shower, mm. and I was stoked about that. Actually, two stoked major. Stoked about it. I was stoked because like I don't need to sleep. I can have an excuse. Some guys to don't not, care though, girl. And he, I know, I learned you that quickly. That. I thought yeah. that was not the case because other guys were like, "Ew, girl, period, like yeah. get that away from me," mm. you know. And so I was used to that, and so I thought that with this guy, I could say, "Hey, I'm on my period. We can wait." And when I got out of the bathroom, he played me a song. Um, I had headphones on. And then, you know, I have this, this whole part of my open letter, which Were is so triggering. Were you open with him about your period? Like, did you just tell him right away, like, oh, I had my period, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, right when he... I feel like I would have been shy, like, if you just traveled this way, and now you're like, oh. Well, yeah, so he was like, start. he wanted to take off my clothes, and that's when I told him mm. I'm on my period. Um, and that's when he said he didn't care, and that he actually liked the taste of blood. <sighs> And what's so weird is, like, his album also is called Blood. Like, his second Rye album is called Blood. And it, and it always triggered me whenever I would see that because I would always remember um, that Thank sentence. You. Definitely that he, mention the major minor when we get to that. I don't know yes. if we're there yet. So you're in Berlin. You guys, I, when some, at some point, he takes nude photos of you, right? Yeah, it's like the second day. And second aren't day. these photos, like, I'm not trying to jump ahead, but these photos are later on used during an album launch party. And yes. they're just like put up everywhere and your mom was like well well here's the thing the, the photos that were actually taken in berlin he hung up in his fucking studio in our apartment so that everybody that came so did in he to print play them? he printed them yeah. and he framed them and they were literally like you know big did they have your face and stuff or was oh it yeah like, yeah my so face like, and my naked body at 18 years old uh, hang, like freshly 18 yeah. two months and has them hanging in his studio to the point where people afterwards told me that they were uncomfortable every time they were sitting there because they would have to look at me naked. And yeah. it's kind of like a weird thing to put a guy in that situation where he knows his wife, you know, and then here she is naked in his studio and they're like playing, me, you know, it's just a horrible, weird power dynamic. Like, do you look or do you not look? You yeah. know, that's like what guys were feeling like, am I supposed to like acknowledge this or like, what is this doing? Why is she nude? And it was like three of them, mm. three in a row on the wall. So, and then the other ones ended up being on jet lag Milosh's album around the time of Rye. So then after you, so before you go to your dad's and everything, you end this trip with Milosh and do you feel like you're in love with him after it? Yeah. Yeah. So you're oh. like head over heels. Like, <sighs> yeah. Love like this, man. this is the love of my life. This is even not even realizing this is a process of group, you know, the, the, what ends up happening yeah. with grooming. Like I was like, Oh, I love him. He, we're like soulmates, you know, um, we're so much alike. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he's writing all, you know, wants to write music about me. Yeah. And so you're just feeling high. I can't even imagine then going to meet your dad after that. Cause you probably like, I feel like you couldn't even like fully like put like, I couldn't en no, engage you're right. with your dad you're because totally you're right. so like, you're totally right. You just had all this happen, which was Correct. a lot. Oh yeah. So then you meet your dad and I was back. confused, too, because I was like, that was painful. Yeah. And what was that? But Was that normal? Like, right. Questioning yourself? Totally. Exactly. That whole thing cycle where you're mm -hmm. like, what is, do I tell any, do I ask someone? Because like, it's such a shameful thing, which predators do a lot, actually, is they put you in a shameful situation so that you're more hesitant to talk to somebody else about it. Mm. So it keeps you more silent. Yeah. And that, that definitely happened for me. I was afraid to tell anybody what happened that time. So you Berlin. get home. And how's the relationship from there? Like, when do you see each other again? So we're emailing all the time now. Now his girlfriend. Why were you texting? Was that not a thing or what? So he was in Europe. So it was so expensive. Like and everything. So it was like G chat. I'm like, right. Was that a bug? Oh, he saw it. Yeah, I was like, to get away from me. <laughs> it's his spy. Oh my gosh. Stop the fly on the wall. <laughs> fly so on the wall. you're emailing a ton. Then when does, like, when's the next time you see each other? So in January, the following year. So now 2011. Oh, so like a whole year until you see each other again. Totally. Why? So because he was with this girl and, oh. and he had so he no money. She was pretty much cheating on her with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The whole time. You guys have this relationship. And I guess I don't want to like skip anything, but like, would it be like too soon to go to the marriage part or no? Like, it's did something fine. happen before that? Well, no, he comes. Well, yeah, there's a lot of things, actually. Yeah. So, I mean, in the sense where one thing I would really like to talk about definitely is how involved the music industry was in this process. Yes, that was actually I was going to ask you because I know. So, like, were they involved even before the marriage part? So, OK, so obviously, yes, definitely. Before and their the name is part. Red. 
So red light actually wasn't involved in it until the tail end, okay. which was one of the most major parts of it. Mm -hmm. um, but it was Innovative Leisure and um, Polydor and Loma Vista. Mm -hmm. So these three entities, well, at first it was Innovative Leisure. Um, Innovative Leisure put the first oh, offer on Rye. Stop, because now you're starting. You just made me think about the v the touring in America and the visa. And like, yes. Oh, he married you. For to, a fucking so that he card. Could, tour mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. So that's why his management's getting involved in this because yep. you are like, not only is like groomed prize, but also his ticket to go and Correct. perform and make these people a bunch of money. Correct. So on the backs of a, of sexual assault compared to like engagement to like marriage, how long was between like, were you ever engaged to like proposed? No, to we him? were not engaged. It was literally one week engagement. And then you were just married in that like yellow room. What was that? Yeah, it was the vomit color. I call it the vomit colored room. <laughs> it's, the color yeah, was it was so Van Nuys bad. City Hall. Wow. And didn't even get me a ring. That's like 30 um, minutes away from here, right? Like not it far. is. Yeah, it's close. I'm in the valley. To, You're now there, getting right? hip yeah. to LA. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's like that. 30 minutes, they have an airport 25 there. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you now know. <laughs> but yeah, so we, we got married there. And, and before that, though, I didn't know what was actually happening. So apparently what was happening that I found out from many people that were around him mm -hmm. at that time where they were refusing an artist visa for him. Why? He wanted to get an artist visa to the point where, well, I don't know. I feel like maybe I should just say what I want to say. So. You can <laughs> oh, say no. it. Okay, I'm going to say it. So Robin Hannibal, who was his um, business partner at the time, he did Rye with him. So they wrote those like musical notes together, okay. basically. Um they got the contract from Innovative Leisure, and then Milos was asking Innovative Leisure for an artist visa without CCing on the email Robin. So then Innovative Leisure tells Robin, like, did you know Milos is, is like... Is Robin in America? Do you know? Or, yeah, okay, he, so and Robin he, was moved to, he moved okay. to LA. No, but he is from Denmark. He already got his artist visa. Okay, he got cool. on his own. He wasn't, like, asking... He yeah. wasn't marrying somebody to get an artist visa. He got on his own. Milos messages Innovative Leisure for an artist visa... They message Robin asking him if he's open to putting the advance money from the album towards an artist visa. And Robin's like, what the fuck? No. And then they have a G-chat conversation, Robin and Milos, going like, why are you asking for an artist visa? Like, I'm not going to pay for your artist visa. Like, go get your own artist visa. And Milos was like, I'm trying to do something here. Like, back off. And he Robin tried to finesse the system. He seems totally, very cheap. Oh, very so cheap. cheap. And yeah. very usury yeah. kind of person. So so Robin was like, no, that's an absolute no. So then go back to Innovative Leisure. It's not happening. We're not putting this advance money towards Milos's artist visa. Then Milos comes to me. Oh. Proposes to me while we're having bacon wrapped steak. I'll never forget that he made steak wrapped in bacon. Ugh, I don't like when mixing meats. To be yeah, honest. I don't. I'm really not a mixing either. meat. It's I like my meat, but like separate. Separate. Yeah. Yeah, me too. It's like bacon in the morning. Yeah, like, steak I, at even night. Even I have a hamburger, I don't want bacon on it. Like I just want the hamburger. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm the same way. Yeah. So I remember eating and being like, okay, whatever. And and then he proposed to me, and he was like, you know, listen, you're like the love of my life. Did he present you a ring? Nope, no ring, wow. no nothing. And I should have known them, but I was 19. Yeah. And it so, was years at this point totally. of grooming. Oh, years, years since 16. And so he was like, you're the love of my life. Um, you know, I know it's going to be hard on us having to leave every three months because you have to leave every three months if you're not a U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. So you have to leave every three months. So he was like, we can actually be together. Let's do this. And then he goes, but then he does end up mentioning that he has a tour possibly lined up. And he goes, this would be so wonderful. We would tour the world together. Um, I can get to show you the world. It will be so romantic. We can take side trips alongside of like show up at a place for a gig and then, you know, make a trip to another country yeah. for a little while and then go back on tour. So he sold it so to he you. Yeah. He totally sold it to me. And I said, yes. And that was like low key, not only like manipulating your like relation or your like romance there, but it's also... Yes. He fucked over your career hardcore, right? Oh, yeah. Because you kind of stopped Look at my MDB. It's 2012, no and I got married in 2012, and then after 2012, nothing. And then so you go on tour, you get married yep. to him, and do you go on tour with him? Yep. He and makes me go to all 210 fucking shows. 210. How was it? Were you over it, or were you just, like, so in love? That, at like, first, it was good. Yeah, it was fun. Like, you're on tour. Like, it sounds, like, totally. great. Totally. Right? And then I just... Did you go to all the shows, too, and everything, too? Girl. Oh. A lot and of time. I got and I was done with those songs. <laughs> I'm like, tell I'm you right so now, and he would be so Ugh. offended. But I was like, I've heard this song like 350 times. Luckily, now. he doesn't play on the radio or anything. Oh Not God. relevant enough. No, when I was even in Mexico recently, 
I went to a store to buy something and his song was playing and I was really? like, I gotta yeah. go. Oh, it, it, when it happens, it's horrible. Ugh. I feel like that would make my stomach sink oh, it does. and black out. I like, do. Low key. Oh yeah, I'm like, I have to like grasp on something and then and then find my way out. Where's the light? And then go outside. But so how long were you yeah. married for? Six years. Six years. So was most of your marriage like with going on tour? Like, did you guys ever like have a house together, a place together, and like? We had an apartment together. Uh First, he moved into my apartment that I already had. Yeah. And then we moved into another apartment that I'm pretty sure I was on the lease first because he didn't even have a credit score then. (laughs) So I had to get that apartment. He's like 30 something years old. And nothing. nothing. No, nothing. And nothing. He came with two shirts and two pairs of jeans. That's what he came with. Tragic. And had nothing in his account. And then Polydor gives him a $750,000 record deal. Wow. Does and he so, get that like right away or does he just get like 100K first, right? He it's gets, like, through the years. they had to split that. So mm. it was like, yeah, some things were taken out for music videos, et cetera. Yeah. And then they had to split that between him and, and Robin. The guy, yeah. And yeah, exactly. Um, or is Robin a girl? Robin's a guy. Robin's right? a guy. Okay, cool. Robin's and that's who he's guy. currently in the band with? Mm-hmm. Okay. But not anymore. Robin and him had a falling out because oh. Milos also scammed him. Oh, I'm not so surprised. So he has a whole, which Robin probably would not make feel comfortable me saying that, but no. I feel comfortable saying it because not, it, that's another thing that was really frustrating, which I think a lot of people don't understand. When you come forward about sexual abuse, um, it, there's not a lot of people that want to come stand by your side. Mm-hmm. And they, they'll tell you they know privately they'll send Mm -hmm. you text messages or have phone calls with you and pat you on the head and tell you i knew or i knew that and Mm. wow now when i see that but then they won't they they won't advocate for you ever no no everyone's silent and it's a good honestly it's so powerful that you do speak about it because it's a warning to other people i feel like it's a public announcement it is is a public announcement like you come (laughs) forward first of all you either have nobody advocate for you or you get made fun of on tiktok Mm -hmm. yeah and that's really where we've that's where we've ended up I mean, that's, it's really the truth. Like you either have to have, like, for example, I remember when I was first doing interviews about Milos and are there any other girls he abused? Are there any other girls he abused? Are there any other girls? It's not like discounting your own experience. It's like one woman's enough, bro. (laughs) Yeah. One woman's enough. You don't need to have a list of 10 women. Then you're like, oh, now we got a problem. It's like, we have a problem if one woman is saying she was deeply abused. Yeah. We have a problem there. He, and that was another thing with Johnny Depp. It's like, no pattern of abuse before. Well, you know what? That's a lot of the time, guys. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of the time. It's not like, and also the NDAs. You know many NDAs probably Johnny Depp had people sign? Oh my a gosh. lot. Possible. Yeah. A lot. It happens Now they have them on the iPhones. Time. You just got to do a quick century. Quick. You don't even know what you're reading nowadays. Oh, no, you don't. Like, you just, like, just got to do the, type the code in. Wait, <laughs> so before we get to the divorce part, yeah, I want to mention. That was the worst part. Yeah, that there's two like nasty things so the photos that were taken of you at some point by him were used during an album like promotion like party thing yeah and that the, he set up and you went into this party with your mother and she saw these photos and she was just and then like, the audio so then it's me saying no and he reversed it yeah. to saying on so there was an instance where um yeah, alexa and out. milos were intimate and she did not want what he was giving and she said no 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 and he ended up recording that reversing it Making it on, 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 yeah. kind of, and then using that in a song. Was that the same album? Don't call the, it. It's called. <laughs> don't call it. Don't call it. No. Oh, it's so so disturbing that there's like it's out there. Like people can go right now and look it up on Spotify. Oh, and hear it's on there. You being abused yes. in that. That's fucked up. And no one's doing anything about it. And what's tell me about Major Minor Love? Like what is so that? So Major Minor Love is the first song that he wrote about me. And, it, and it's called Major J- Minor Love. Major because Minor major because she's love a minor. For a minor. Yeah. And it was a play on for music notes. So major chords, minor chords. Um, so he was able to tuck that in there. Mm. And if you read the lyrics where at the time I didn't even realize it. Um, but if you look at the lyrics, he talks about, you know, lacing your thighs with beautiful lies, kidnapping your mind. I'll help you find that gentle pain. Mm-hmm. And he talks about pain across my face, um, being the pain across my face. Um, and it's all in these so- soothing melodies where no one would actually know yeah. what the fuck he it's was singing. It's kind of like Lana Del Rey speaks, totally. like, sings about being abused, but it's right. like very romantic sounding. Right. That's exactly. But he's like, I'm a predator, but I'm making it soothing sounding and listen to me oh, and bad. don't even notice. And so I didn't even notice until years late. I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice really until my open letter. Yeah. Like really looking into it. A lot of realizations it. there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that you're married until happened. you're 25, right? Correct. And then why did you divorce? Like I brought him into a therapist's office. I need to get the fuck out of there. I was starting to feel insane. 
He was making me feel like I was insane. Um, I tried so many times to get out of that really sh- fraudulent. I only, I really don't like to say that like fraudulent, fraudulent relationship. Marriage, so my subconscious, yeah, yeah fraudulent marriage. Um, and he would threaten my finances. Um, and since now, he was a breadwinner. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't have my career you weren't working anymore. anymore. Yeah, no, I had no money. Dedicate everything to him. Everything to him. And that's exactly what he wanted. Exactly. Because he didn't want you going like working. And correct. Stuff, right. He wanted you like correct. Um, leaning on him. Yeah. He wanted that codependent and one set of keys. Yeah. One set of keys the whole entire time. Weird. So then you guys could like, you always have to be, be together like, or you're locked in the house. And you'd be like, this is a symbol of our love. This is like, this shows how much we're meant to be together. We don't even need to be apart, you know? And so getting another key would be basically disproving that fact. And so, yeah. So we were together 24 seven. I had no career at that point. And then he was now making all of this money and didn't even have a joint bank account. Wouldn't let me have access to his account yeah i had to go to him for his credit card to get coffee oh uh, yeah let's talk a little bit more about it. i wanted yes. i definitely want to talk about the divorce red and then like your legal too. um yeah so red light yeah. is a management company that was representing milosh and they're he, huge so they um are owned by live nation there's i've and like saw other people that were also like oh, yeah. signed to them like i've i saw that i've talked about someone recently i can't remember who it was but it was on my channel um they Anyways, have a lot of people. They do. And they make a lot of money. And, and they make a lot of money off of touring specifically because of Live, of Live Nation. Nation. So then they inserted themselves in your divorce because they ultimately wanted to, I guess, protect Milos. And like kind of screw you over and like you get nothing. Basically what they were trying to do was make sure, sh- basically they'll do anything for the artists. Mm-hmm. These, the music industry will do anything. They they don't give a fuck. Yeah. As long as they're making money, um, they'll do anything. And also the people at the top of these labels a lot of them are predators themselves so it's 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 not like oh wow you're a predator it's like they're all horrible people you yeah. know so it's not like you're calling out it's all of them combined so they're not they don't have any ethics or anything there's no like moral standard within the music industry at all yeah so basically i wanted a divorce i took him to a therapist's office now i have to rewind though because he needed to be with me for three years to get his permanent residence but he was right so at three years in 2015 i just recently found emails where he was coaching and wrote my affidavit to the government to get him permanent residence literally like I didn't write your it. so your statement to the government to, to say help that him this get man permanent residence yes wow he wrote it he was planning like your stance on his ability under to oath he wrote my affidavit That's and i didn't even remember that until i found and all was it the submitted proof. It was submitted and he got permanent residence and red light was behind that as well. Yeah. And then fast forward, um, after 2015, once he has permanent residence, what does he need me for anymore? Mm. He got everything he then needed. Then he just treat you like shit and like, totally. at this point, then, then you're like, I want to get divorced like a year later, right? Oh, it totally. it was miserable. It was m- miserable. Be- I would have one glass of wine or something, for example, and he would literally be like, you're an alcoholic. And it was like everything I did was wrong. I was con- I was chronically apologizing to him. Yeah. And that's when you know something's wrong. Yeah. When you're always the one apologizing. I mean, there's so many emails of me. Milos, I'm so sorry about this. Milos, I'm so sorry about that. Do you love me? Honestly, I'm it's this. iconic. It was all over email because emails stay. I know. Like texts don't, but emails stay. I know. Stay. Emails stay forever. And I have every and I'm single glad you do. One. I saved so, every single one. I mean, even if you didn't, though. like I, That's the thing, though. So many. That's I know. But then they it's wouldn't. So but like, I guess because I know you even personally. You do, so thank you. You. Like I but would even believe if you it, do, but people like, literally don't believe. Like, if you yeah. have evidence, it's like she put that makeup on. Yeah. It's like oh, if you don't have evidence, it didn't happen. It's like wow, good to know where you guys stand because it's pretty obvious. It's like even when you do have evidence, you doctored it, and then if you don't, it didn't happen. So that's really that's what's fucked up. So what did Red Light put in your divorce agreement that was so messed up? So Red Light put in so well Red Light referred this mediator um, named Tara Scott. And she was in Beverly Hills. Mulish was press- pressuring me the entire time to s- sign these simple divorce papers. He kept mm-hmm. saying that. Um, pressuring me, pressuring me, pressuring me, coercing me, coercing me. Then saying he was going to withhold money from me mm. if I didn't sign the divorce yeah. papers. And that's extortion. So he agreed to give you like a little bit. But he's like, hey, I'll give you this little bit if you sign. Mm-hmm. Like, And it's, totally. it's just this back and forth. Like he's trying to find like. And then I'll, I'm not going to give you anything if you don't sign it. That's an email. And it's like, well, what's in this document? Well, we find out what's in this document. So you sign it. And then... so I like, didn't find out until January of 
this year. So you sign it and then some years go past and I think like you've really come to terms to what you've gone through and you've yes. been a really great advocate for domestic violence. Thank you. And an advocate for yourself. Like that's Thank really you. important because like I It's been really hard. Yeah, and a lot of people like they don't have advocates for themselves and like if you can advocate for yourself, like that's so much power to you because it's so hard. Like I literally have goosebumps over my legs. Because like oh, I that's see so them. I know I'm like it's so ugly, right? No, um, I love that. That's sweet. <laughs> no, but it makes me ner- like it's very powerful, you know what Thank I mean? You. So I'm really proud that you've like come forward and spoke about that and you've tried to do some like legal things to kind of like bring a little justice and we're like getting emotional. I know, I'm like trying but, to cry I know. Here. But you've like done some legal things and like what what have you been like up to when it comes to that? Like So I sued him. Mm-hmm. Um which was Are you currently suing him or very, so I had to draw well or did, did it's the not judge over. throw it it's away? Or, yeah. No, no. I draw well, I I specifically You tried I to sue in one way and then now you're I, I'm so I'm gonna so basically what's happening is he used that horrible stipulated judgment that him and I signed to block me from being able to sue him. Yeah. Because somehow the two words assault and battery are in my divorce stipulated judgment, which is just that if that doesn't say you're fucking guilty, I don't know what the fuck does. It's like, what divorce fucking call? And then you use that as your defense. And it's like, I I just want to actually, I want him to respond on the merits. I don't want this bogus, like, stipulated. It's like, this is so. A a paper you signed under, like, really. Horrible circumstances. Disturbing. Yeah. Of him threatening me, taking my money away, giving me money. It it was just like, it was a nightmare. It was six years of my life that was so painful and horrible. My husband was there as a friend along the way, mm-hmm. and he witnessed how horrible it was for me. And it was abuse. I mean, yeah. this is what abusers do. The, even when you leave them, they don't let you leave. Yeah. They don't let you ever leave, actually. That's like a sad part about even my life now. I'm like, okay, I left him, yeah. But it's still such a big part of my life. And yeah. you're just, they make sure you're always like in their web. And it's it's gross. It's, it's really toxic. Um, and it's also disturbing because, like, there's statute of limitations. Oh, like yeah. That, like, and the child are... sexual assault statute got opened in 2019. Mm-hmm. And that's what allowed me to be able to sue him. Otherwise, I wouldn't even have been able to sue him. Does he know that you're trying to sue him? Like, he has knows. he been presented papers and stuff? And he responded to my lawsuit with the stipulated judgment as his defense. Oh, my gosh. The that's thing that how... you're calling fraudulent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I didn't even know until January of this year that that language was in there. Is that where you're at right now when it comes to this yeah, situation? Yeah, so it's not over. Um, so he's responded and you're now like maybe... So I dropped the case without privilege. Okay. Um, which means that I can refile. Okay. So... Yeah. Refile. <laughs> um, and so new understanding of everything. I needed um, a break. Yeah. Litigation. You know, something that a lot of people don't understand with litigation is it's really triggering it's re-traumatizing and it's very hard. Um, and so suing your abuser is not a fun time. It feels even people like, wow, she's getting justice or wow, how empowering. And honestly, my life has been a living it's like hell reopening it all over all again. The wound, you're the wound reliving just it. Ripped and open. you're also as a as an adult now, oh, you're yeah. seeing it so differently. Like every day I'm seeing it differently. Yeah. Every day and I'm seeing it differently. Too, it's just like you know really yeah, I spend like four hours sometimes a day talking about this shit yeah. of abuse. When my daughter's upstairs playing and laughing and I want to be up with her. Yeah. And I'm down here in this hole, you know, having to relive all these things. And that's what people don't really understand is that even when you go through... First of all, the justice system is corrupt. Yeah. There's no, like, justice in the ground. You know, there really isn't. But it's so re-triggering and re-traumatizing and horrible and... I want to say for people to go that route because either way there is some kind of empowerment to it. Like taking the control back from the Stop. abuser. You are so powerful too. Like even like with Thank everything you. going on and even like the, ju- like the justice struggles and everything, like I totally see that. Like it's so powerful. Cause even if, Thank you. All, even if you go to court and you lose it, nonetheless, you are showing the world like what you went through. And that's something that like so many people can I relate to. I do for my daughter. And that's so powerful. I love you for that. Thank you. I love you too. I really <laughs> hope that Nova like it's like mom. Yeah. Dad. Oh, she definitely will. I, I hope mean, so. she, I think be... she probably even knows already. You're like a I superhero. Hope. Yeah, I sometimes see it actually. The first day that I filed, <laughs> I was crying in the back scene and go, Nova, mommy did it, and she goes, Mama, and she reaches oh. and she gives me a hug. Oh my god. Stop. And I'll never forget it. I was in the back scene in front of Erewhon, <laughs> and just looking, I couldn't even believe it. But I felt it then. Like, she, like when she's older. Yeah. Be even more. I hope. 
I so, hope you. People forget with litigation, you're like silence. It's yeah. a silencing game, to be honest with I you. I hate that shit. And I'll never be, I, I mean, I guess, well, <laughs> so I don't know. Because we'll never be There's an silenced. agency right now threatening to sue me. And I'm like, I'm going to crowdsource everything. Like, because they're, Who's they the scammed agency? me. It's like some agency called like Rocket Jump. I don't know. They scammed other people. And I, or they were scammed, or they were screwed over by what? the Ace Family shit. Yeah. It's kind of stupid. I don't even know if I can really, I don't know if I can talk about it right now. You know, what I mean? that's what it is. But, um, example A. Yeah. Well, it's true. I do want to end this one because we've got part two. Yes. Okay. But I, I just want to like, say <laughs> this was so powerful. So amazing. Thank the story you. that you have, like it's Thank traumatizing. You. It's disgusting. It's horrific. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're still sitting here today, you've got a beautiful child, a beautiful husband. You've got a beautiful life. There's hope. There's literally hope at the end of the tunnel. And even though you're going to live through this for a long time, it's getting better in a way. But and yeah. And it, through that pain and through you dealing with this, like you're inspiring a lot of people. And there's a lot of people who need to hear this story and understand like the manipulation yes. that goes behind abuse and just how easily it can be done to just anybody. any regular person, you know? Anybody. Um, truly anybody. <laughs> truly anyone. So truly anyone. I'll leave some resources down below and Thank some you. I've been looking into those like things that you sent me and like oh, I'm thinking yes. about doing like something. I don't know. I'm gonna wait until you I figure should. it out, but I know I'm going to. But thank you so much, Alexa, for being on this thank episode. You. We're gonna have Sorry. a second episode next week that you guys can watch where we're gonna talk about Zoe 101 and Dan yeah. Schneider and everything else. But this was such an important just conversation and I'm thank so you. blessed to have been able to meet thank you. Thank you for letting me sit here. That was meant a lot. Thank you. And I, I just need to give you a hug. Oh my God, please give me a hug. Uh, love you. Oh, love you. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you guys so much like. <laughs> for watching this episode. Go check out Alexa. Everything will be listed below. Match the... Yeah, the, match the, don't send match me any stores. harassment. Yeah. Don't just, send any harassment. Please, please stop. It's like... No, it's, this is not about it's, it. It's, it's, yeah, just oh, yeah. stop. Just well, be nice. Or just don't message me. That'd be chill. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Right, well, thank you guys, and I'll see you in next week's episode. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>